Hi there, my name's Ian. I'm from LearnPracticalGist.com and I want to talk to you today about Map Overlay. This is one of a number of videos in my What is GIS series. Map Overlay is a central component of any geographical information system, so an understanding of it is really important if you're going to understand what a geographical information system is. A discussion of Map Overlay would be incomplete without having a bit of a chat about this fellow on the left called Ian McCarg, because he's known by many uh, as the founding father of geographical information systems. He was very keen to develop a technique uh, to incorporate the environment into planning decisions. After a bit of a chat about him, I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to give a, a, an example where I think is one of the finest examples of map overlay around, and that's actually a study that Ian McCarg did in the 1960s. So we'll begin by talking about Ian McCarg very briefly. He's a guy who was brought up um, in both the city and the country. He spent a lot of time in the wood, in woodlands and a lot of time also in industrial areas in, in Glasgow. As a young man, he experienced the hideousness of World War II and returned home to find that the woodlands that he'd so loved as a, as a young boy had been bulldozed and replaced by housing, or what he called faceless housing. He also had tuberculosis and spent six months or so in a Scottish institution that was really quite a depressing place. It was cold, it was uh, damp, it was um, unclean and so forth. And he didn't do too well there, but he found himself eventually, or found his way eventually into uh, an institution in Switzerland where he recovered quite well. And this, in contrast to Scotland, was uh, bright, airy, the food was good, there was a, a good environment. And he saw that link, he, was, he started to see that link between environment, uh, health and happiness. And like I say, he became driven to find this technique to, to bring the environment into planning. So what he did was he developed this map overlay technique. And a lot of people will say, a lot of professions will say, oh yeah, for example, geographers, we've been doing map, we've been doing map overlay for years. And yes, they had, but what they hadn't done was they hadn't consistently made the effort to bring a, a bunch of maps together in the same place, bring them at the same scale and overlay them and do this repeatedly from project to project to project and take, and take this methodology to the community. That's what they hadn't done and that's what Ian McCarg did. So let's look at this study, um, the Richmond Parkway study. So let's look at what happened. There was these two roadways in, in Richmond in New York. They're shaded blue here, um, shaded blue in the, in the north and in the south. And planners and engineers wanted to join them. Now the route that they proposed um, created community uproar because um, it went through parkland and it went through forests and, and all these recreational areas that the community actually really valued. So Ian McCarg was brought in to, um, to, to try and resolve this issue. And what he ended up doing was creating a series of maps dealing with the concerns of the engineers and the concerns of the community and brought them together at the same scale so that they could be overlaid. So what he did that was quite um, innovative actually was each of the maps he shaded in three different tones. The darkest areas represented those areas that were least suited to the freeway, the grey areas moderately suited to the freeway and transparent areas uh, were areas that were ideally suited to the to the uh, roadway to siting the roadway so what we can see here is the first of the engineering values and the darkest areas are shaded those darkest areas are the steepest slopes least suitable for the roadway and the, the transparent areas are those areas that are, have shallow slopes and are most suited for the, for the roadway. So what we can see is 
when we start to overlay these, these maps on top of each other, the areas that are best suited for the roadway are going to be transparent and um, shine through. So let's look at the first example of, um, of, of map overlay. So he's created this slope map here and the next map is a surface drainage map on the left. The dark areas are those areas um, that in terms of surface drainage are least suited for siting the, the roadway and the transparent areas are those areas that are best suited um, for siting the roadway. And on the right we see our first example of map overlay. So we've overlaid the surface drainage map onto the slope map. Okay, so let's have a look at the, the uh, slope map and you can see all this area in the bottom left corner is transparent here but when you overlay the surface drainage map onto it you can see dark areas from the surface drainage map start to show. So this is a composite map of those two themes. Okay, this is a very very important concept to understand this concept of, of overlaying maps on top of each other and the transparent areas being the ideal route for the, uh, for, for the uh, roadway and the darker areas being unsuitable, unsuitable or less suitable for the roadway. Okay, if you understand this, I'm just going to, uh, if, and if you, sorry, if you don't understand this very well, flip back between the previous slide and this slide, back and forth and back and forth until you understand it. I'm going to go a bit, uh, quite a bit quicker now because we're going to bring in a whole bunch of other themes. Okay. So bedrock foundation on the left, overlaid onto those previous two themes on the right. Okay. Soil foundation on the left, overlaid onto those other themes on the right. Soil drainage on the left, the darkest areas, once again least suitable, have the worst drainage on the left. Um, and least suitable for the road. The transparent areas have the best drainage and are most suited for the road. And on the right, we overlay them. And you can see how they're starting to accumulate. Susceptibility for, to erosion. You don't want to build a road and have, the, uh, and, and have all, the soil around, uh, all the soil around it erode away. So once again, you know, this dark area being least suitable, transparent area being most suitable. Okay, and on the right what we end up with is this composite map that is the composite map of all the engineering themes. So, in engineering terms, you know, there's some transparent areas here, there's some sort of transparent or some lighter areas here, okay. Now this is, um, what I've done here is I've basically um, scanned these images in and I've brought them into a GIS and I've overlaid them. Okay, uh, in, a, in a real situation, what you would see is you would see these darker areas actually creating some very, very dark areas over here. It just doesn't work so well using the technique that I've done. But using paper maps or transparencies that you would overlay on a light table, um, this would actually produce some very dark areas and some very light areas. So let's now have a look at the social values that we're bringing in. Forest values. What are the good, what are the best areas of forest, the, the ones that the community values the most? Darkest areas are those, um, are those areas that are least suitable for the freeway because it's the best forest land and the transparent areas um, are, the, are the most suitable for the freeway because it's the for, poorest forest land or there may even be forest, um, forests may be absent in those. Okay, the same sort of thing going on here. What we're seeing is historic values and these round dots that you're seeing here are probably I would suggest homesteads or historic homes and stuff that are just buffered around. Okay, and we can see that those round you know, there's little round bits that accumulate onto the composite map. Okay. Institutional values, I think you'll find these are uh, things like schools, um, sports facilities and so forth. On the right, once again, accumulating, accumulating to that map. 
Land values, once again, moving to the right, accumulating. Recreational values, these will be areas that people recreate the most on the weekend. Where they recreate will be the darkest, and where they don't recreate will be the lightest, and um, moving, of course, to the map on the right and being overlaid. Residential values, you, uh, you don't um, these, these are places where people live, I would assume. You don't want a freeway going near where you live. Um, once again, um, it overlays onto the right. Scenic values, where people like to spend time on the weekends, I suppose. Um, the most valuable scenic areas are shaded the darkest and the least valuable the lightest. And once again, they accumulate on the right. Okay. Tidal inundation is sort of not really a social value, it's one that I chucked in there. Um, but once again it accumulates. Water values is an important one because when you're constructing um, the roadway and when you're running the roadway you don't want your local streams polluted. Um, so um, water values are actually pretty important as a social value as well. And wildlife values is a pretty obvious one. And so we end up with these two composite maps, engineering values on the left and social values on the right. Okay, you can see that there's sort of some transparent areas in there, you know, not quite transparent but lighter than the rest, than a lot of other places. Um, sorry, it's flicked, flicked over. And you can see a similar thing happening on the engineering values. I would suggest to you that what Ian McCarg did was he took each of these maps and reviewed them and uh, came up with his, his own version of a composite engineering map and his own version of a social values map. But he, he probably even workshopped these, I would suggest, to come up with those. When he overlaid them on top of each other, he came up with this recommended minimum social cost alignment. And I recall that uh, it was actually the dotted one that might have been uh, selected. Um, I could be wrong there, but the point is that one, one of his, uh, his um, routes that he came up with was adopted. So in any sort of negotiation you're not going to get uh, full agreement on the final route, but um, what you're going to get is you're going to get uh, a negotiated route that hopefully people agree with. Okay, so that's the Ian McHarg case study. Uh, you've been listening to me, I'm Ian Allen. Uh, the book that we've been looking at is Ian McHarg, a 1967 book called Design with Nature, and the chapter is a step forward. I um, recommend, can highly recommend this book. It's not just a good educational book, it's actually a really good read. So, watch out for other videos and hope to see you again soon. Bye.